Something's brewing at D&D. Wow! Al Pacino! It's not Al anymore. It's Dunk. Dunkachino? Don't mind if I do. Before we get into anything, I want to go ahead and give a shout out to my boy, Chris Lilly. He is right now entered in the Pristine Auction Thad Moffat Scheme Contest. Uh, we're trying to get his work out on the track. There's been a lot of work by the Row Racing communities last couple days to get a lot of votes for him. And he is right now leading. But I want to take this opportunity to go ahead and promote his stuff. This could be the foot in the door for him getting into this industry. And I think it would just be really cool if we can get him there together after everything he's done for us over the last four years. If you wanna go ahead and support, I'm gonna put a little link in the description where you can go ahead and put in your vote. We have a few more days to go. Let's see if we can end it off strong here for him. And with that promotion out of the way, we have some ASCA news today, boys. And first off, the ASCA 500 is tonight. The seventh fucking annual ASCA 500. Holy shit. We've been doing this stuff for four years. Sometimes it's hard for me to fathom that, like, you know, this started as, like, you know, just a bunch of kids, like, fucking around during the pandemic. And the community that we have built in that time, I talked about this during the finale, is unreal. Pre-race coverage is going to be beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to have a lot of the boys coming in. We're going to be doing some interviews uh, before the running. And then at 8 p.m., we're actually going to be having our traditional duels to the side, the 40-car field. We had a full server of 60 people practicing for the clash which i was not expecting i did not expect a full field for the clash i'm expecting way more people to show up tonight after the 40 are set for the ask 500 we're going to be set for 100 laps of incredible action from flag to flag with my good friend Dunn. he's gonna be commentating with me in the booth here tonight speaking of commentary um i'm being replaced <laughs> i'm mainly kidding i'll still be in the booth but we're gonna have a new play-by-play -play commentator who i'm gonna put on screen right now I don't know his name, but in all jokes aside, I've listened to a bit of his commentary. He is way better than me. Look, I was pretty hesitant starting off because I just didn't know who he was, but I trust him. I think he'll do a pretty good job. You'll be seeing him at Las Vegas next week and for the most of the races when he can show up for. Any races that he can't show up for, you already know I'm going to be back in the booth doing my thing, but I'm looking forward to him. I think he'll do a good job. The Clash was last week, and oh boy, storylines came out of there. Do you remember last episode when I made fun of Corbin Collins for wrecking a shit ton at Pocono. And yeah, he just hits the rubble strip and loses it. Oh, oh, he's about to hit it hard. Well, bro took that to fucking heart because he went out there and won the clash. And the thing was, is that that was not an easy win at all. Thurston and Hyder were just controlling the pack throughout that entire race. Very few people were actually able to break through. I know Martinez was basically working with Thurston. Roldan kept trying to make it three wide. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, there was a point where Swagger tried to get through, but then he popped his motor. <laughs> Like, that's a thing that started happening after a while. People started popping their motor. But Collins was able to surpass all of them late in the running, got a little lucky with the cautions at the end, and was able to take home the win. Feels a lot better. Feels really good. I really embarrassed myself at Pocono. I was trying to figure out the cars, and I was a mess, to say the least. But, you know, was able to redeem myself tonight, and I was running on fumes those last three my trickers, and I said, you know what, I'm just going to... Either we're gonna run out, we're gonna get wrecked, or something else will happen. And I was, I, I couldn't have, I wasn't gonna make it back to the white flag or even around, but thankfully the caution came out and we coasted back around. <laughs> Coming to two laps to go at the Asuka Clash, Roldan was being super aggressive, was getting all over the back of people, and unfortunately gave a bad bump to Martinez, who slammed down the track into Hyder, got into Thurston, and it was caused a huge crash at the front of the field that turned the race upside down and really opened the door for Collins to get through to win the Clash. Coming to two laps to go. Oh, contact! Martinez in the wall! Hyder through the grass! Still sideways! There goes Aiden Smith! Then Martinez, being pissed off that he caused a big crash and got ran into, goes over there and runs into the side of Roldan. Roldan goes back into Martinez, and Roldan starts spinning down the backstretch. It was a mess. Slamming into him, and then they both start getting into it. 
Roldan's not pleased with the 48 running into him. He goes back into Martinez. Martinez hits the wall, and around goes Roldan. Post-race, Martinez shit-talked a shit ton about Roldan. Roldan fought back, and then Martinez, during the middle of Audrey's interview, said, Hey, put me in there. I have some stuff I want to say. And I said, hmm, looks like a fun opportunity to cause some drama. And drama indeed. I'm like, stupid bitch. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to interrupt you there. Uh, clearly, <laughs> this guy is as stupid as he uh, drives. Yeah, you know, you know. No, clear, clearly, this guy is as stupid as he drives because um, he said he said the Tesla autopilot uh, hooked him left, and that wouldn't be po it wouldn't be possible to hit me if you hooked him left. Mow my lawn. But you know, it's it's alright. We all know you're stupid. Shut up. You know, we we know you're washed. Uh, you know, the last championship you're gonna win us on Roblox. You know, it's very unfortunate to see you uh wash. You know, you're kind of like uh Lightning McQueen now. You know, you're relic of the past. It's unfortunate to see this happen too because you know you're so good. At one point, and you know it, it's just sad. It's like seeing a, a king just sick no, no, and dying. You don't seem sad, you, know, you um, man. You, you, you're yeah, sad. You know what? I'm looking at you and I'm like, this guy, guy, this guy doesn't even have his green card. He's speaking up to me like he's in my back bracket. I'm not going to describe what you just listened to, ladies and gentlemen, but. Ask us back. Finally, I want to talk about something that I mentioned a little earlier. Swagger. He blew up while at the front. During the broadcast, I thought that he just slammed on his brakes for no reason, and he made sure to make fun of me for it during his post-race interview. I look back on the stream, and Gavin was just like, oh, he slammed the brakes. And I was like, what are you talking about? No, I blew up. I blew up. Yeah. Look, it, it, there was no smoke. I couldn't see any smoke. That's well, why I say he slammed the brakes. Maybe, maybe you should just get a better graphics card. I don't maybe know. you should die. So anyway, uh, fuck that guy. He's so annoying. I don't even like him. He's stupid annoying. His last name is so dumb. Swaggart? Or Swigart? Or Swigart? What the fuck? Tell your parents. Call your parents. And tell them that they are retarded. Now, the interesting thing about this is that a few people in this 50-lap race that was plucked with cautions at the end of the race were experiencing temperatures going high to the point where cars were blowing up. And it doesn't seem like there's going to be a setup change for the ASCA 500, so I'm curious if preserving your engine's temperatures is going to be a big factor in the ASCA 500. Double the distance, double the wear on the engine. Hopefully it doesn't impact the race too much, but if the clash is anything to go by, it might be something to look out for. Now going into my picks. Last week I had Thurston, Lewis, and Matt Grab. Matt Grab didn't even make the field, Lewis flew into the air, and Thurston got fucked over by a bunch of people in 30th place. So, who are my picks this week, Gavin, you might be asking? So, obviously, the first one's going to be Thurston again. The guy showed that he can do anything at any track, and he just controlled the field at Daytona last week. And although the finish did not show it, he was by far the most impressive guy out there. He just knew when to put his car in the right place, who to block and when to block, when to give up the lead and when to take it back. And that charge he made with Roll Dawn with, with two laps to go was fucking insane. He basically was scaring everybody into opening the lineup and saying, hey, if you don't move out of the way, I am going to run into you. For my second pick, I got Collins, the Ask of Clash winner. I know it might be easy to put him here, but I mean, the guy was the only one that could really outrun the main control cars of the night, like Hyder and Thurston and Martinez and Roldan, people like that. He was really able to put his car in the right place at the end, and I think that that's going to be very crucial. And I know I give him a lot of shit, but genuinely, the guy's a really quick racer. I think you're going to be seeing him up front a lot this season, and I don't think tonight's going to be an exception. Now, last week, I picked Matt Grab just out of random, just pulled his name out of my ass, and he didn't even make the field, so I have to pick someone different. Hmm, who could I pick? There's so many to choose from. I have an entire field of people I could go with. You know what? I'm going to pull a name out of my butt again. Here we go. Let's go with Cheery. Why not? I don't know, I just kind of was like, hmm, who could I pick that, like, could totally just pull a win out of their ass? Man, I'm really talking about pulling shit out of my ass, aren't I? Cheery is somebody who wrecked Roll Dawn at Charlotte, was pretty much non-existent at The Clash, and I don't even know if he made the field. If he did, I didn't know he was there. I think he wins the Ask of 500. No other reason. Same thing as last week. No other reason. When it comes to these type of tracks, you just have to kind of pull a name out of your butt every once in a while. I really need to stop talking about pulling shit out of my butt before people start getting concerned. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a little thing I have. If you guys ever critique me again, might I show you the almighty spoon? <laughs> 